Well, Mufan Yadofia, new head coach of the Long Island Nets. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate you coming on. No, uh, thank you, C. No, I appreciate you guys for having me. All right, let's talk about what led you to the Long Island Nets. Um, first off, you know, Coach Ronnie Burrell. I, I just want to say he did a heck of a job with this crew last year. Um, it was promoted with the Nets. You know, the job became open. Um, and I was one of the candidates in the candidate pool. I got the opportunity to meet with J.R. Holden and the front office staff on Long Island. Uh, they met with Sean Marks, Jock Bond, Jeff, Andy, BJ. And it just felt right, you know. I, I can feel how invested they were in the G League. Uh, and I left each meeting excited about the opportunity to work with this group. Uh, and now I look forward to leading this group um, on, Long, on Long Island. Yeah, that's a good group of guys. And they're going to leave you excited. I know I've, I've spoken to J.R. Holden um, you know, he, he's got such a, a rich uh, international history. I'm sure you guys could just, you know, talk basketball and a lot of your experiences along the way. No, for sure, man. Uh, you know, everybody I run into, uh, they talk highly about JR, and they always talk about how he's a legend overseas. And he had an unbelievable career. Um, and just getting to know JR, man, um, unbelievable dude. And I, I look forward to working with him all year. Uh, you, you, I know uh, you've had a lot of stops around your career, uh, as J.R. Holden did. Um, not yep. necessarily internationally, but you started playing at Georgia Tech. You're from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Um, you know, you played in the G League. You played overseas. I think you're a part of, what, five different uh, G League organizations? Um, yep. that, that's You know, and, and when you're in the G League, you're not necessarily just a part of that G League team. I mean, just like you're going to be in Long Island, you're a part of the the Brooklyn Nets organization. So you were part of, you know, five different NBA uh, franchises and G League teams. I mean, in all those stops, I, I, I would imagine you've got a wealth of information that you bring in here now, a wealth of experiences and things you want to bring into your stop here in Long Island. Yeah, Um I've been grateful to work with different organizations, um, and which has helped me diversify my coaching perspective. You know, at Philly, I was able to learn under Brett Brown uh, and his staff, and Atlanta Lloyd Pierce and his staff. You know, in Washington, West L. West Alice L. Jr. and his staff. Um, last season with the Clippers, Ty Lue and his staff, and also with the Nigerian national team. You know, I'm assistant coach on their staff, so being able to work closely with Mike Brown for me as a young coach, you know, I'm soaking up everything. You know, it's almost like being in college and and coaching is my major, right? Yeah. And and, and each stop, um, the head coach is like the professors. So I was able to learn from each one, um, like Mike Brown, you know, how detailed he was in practice, uh, Ty Lue, uh, how he was able to connect and hold guys, how, hold the players accountable. You know, I have tons of notebooks um, with, with, with notes that I can pull from from my various stops around the league, uh, which is super valuable for me. Um, so come November, you know, we'll see if I was a good student or not. You know, you when you're an when you're an assistant coach, you're you know all these G League places we talked about. You're an assistant coach. Um, how did you get a lot of time with those head coaches? Like, did did they carve out time for you, or was it something that you just sort of observed from afar? Um, a little bit of both, right? Um, you're always observant uh, when you're in an NBA building because you want to learn, right? You want to continue to learn, you want to continue to grow, and um. And all those stops, um, we was grateful and fortunate enough to to be around at training camp. So, you no, know, we was on the floor with the coaches. We were sending coaches meetings. So we got a chance to see um, how those guys implement concepts, defensive concepts, their player development um, program, things of that nature. So you're able to observe and learn at the same time. I can imagine. I mean, you mentioned such great NBA coaches there that you're talking about, and you're and you're observing and you're watching. Um, you're, you're an assistant coach with these G league places. So, um, you know, a lot of player development, I'm sure is, is there, but all that time, are you, are you thinking about when I have the chance now to sit in that main chair as a head coach, right? Like how, how did all this stuff that you're talking about, all these great sort of basketball classes, as you talked about, um, how's that shaping your philosophy of when I get to do it, when I get a chance here, and now you're going to be the head coach of the Long Island Nets, how is that shaping your approach to being a head coach? That's a great question. You know, the biggest thing for me is is being where your feet are. And I'll tell that 
to, to my players all the time. I tell it to other guys that's looking to get in the business, uh, be where your feet are, you know, and work extremely hard um, in the position that you're in at the moment. And then when that time comes and the opportunity presents itself, just make sure you prepare and make sure you're ready. You know, um, if you included my playing experience, I'm right at 10 years of experience, both as a player and a coach in this league. So throughout my experiences, the most common theme about this league and is, is, is development. So for me as a head coach, you know, my number one philosophy is going to be centered on development, uh, helping our players and our staff to become the best versions of themselves. You know, you look around this league and you see coaches, trainers, uh, people in the front office, uh, a lot of them got their start in the G League. Uh, they were able to develop, get reps, um, and prepare for their NBA opportunity. And that's what we're looking to do on Long Island. Uh, we're about development, and I'm excited about the opportunity and uh, the opportunity to lead our group, help them grow. Yeah, and I've had that conversation with Ronnie Burrell about, you know, that there's that idea you're a head coach of a team and you want to win games. Yep. Um, but at the same time, I'm sure there's an edict comes down from management that, you know, the the – the biggest priority in a, in the G League is development, you know, and, and making sure that you're developing players. I, I guess there's a there's a line there, right, about how you're trying to win games. I mean, does does winning games still become sort of the uh, the goal, and then the development will will sort of come from that, or is is sort of the development thing that will lead to winning games? Yeah, it's more, yeah, it's more so that you now the development, the, the development will, will will translate to winning games. Um, here on Long Island, the Brooklyn Nets organization, we're about development. You know, um, the wins will come. And, um, so that's that's where we're going to center our focus um, yeah. in Long Island and to help the Brooklyn Nets as much as possible. Is that how you see the relationship between Brooklyn and Long Island? Like, how do you how do you kind of uh, see how you're going to navigate? Um, that relationship between the two. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you know, one thing that drew me to Long Island when speaking with Sean and Jock was that you can feel the collaborative spirit, you know, from a relational standpoint on Long Island. You no, know, we're going to be an extension of Brooklyn Nets. You know, the system you see in Long Island will be largely the same system as in Brooklyn, right? Mm. Um, we're going to try to mirror them as much as possible. Um, we'll have guys that will be back and forth from Brooklyn and Long Island. So we want to make sure we're speaking the same language and making making sure it's as seamless as possible. You know, JR and I will work closely and, and be in constant communication about our players and their development. So I would imagine there's, you know, there's a lot of that goes on in the offseason, tweaks to the system. I mean, Jacques Vaughn kind of came in, you know, as the head coach in the middle of the season last year, um, and, and, the, and the team changed, you know, like the, the, the Nets – team the roster drastically changed so you would imagine there's going to be a lot of tweaks to the system coming into this year in the on the Brooklyn side um are you a part of that kind of conversation are you a part of of you know what's the off season like like you mentioned you're trying to get every you're, you're trying to get the Long Island Nets on the same page as the Brooklyn Nets so are you sort of involved in that in 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 them setting up what's going to happen with Brooklyn this year? No, a hundred percent, you know, um, especially being the G league head coach. Right. So I, I'll be in like this. Well, and a lot of young players, you know, a lot yeah. of, young, you know, young rookies coming in and developmental guys coming in. Yeah. Right. Just, just to set the tone, this is my second day here. Right. This is my second day here. <laughs> as we're but, taping this. Yeah. In August. Yeah. This is my second day here as we're taping this, but going forward, you know, I'll, I'll send in meetings, you know, um, I'll be, in, in all the practices, the training camp practices, and things of that nature. So I'll be, you know, taking notes, you know, watching film. So as we trans trans transition onto Long Island, I'm able to implement um, the same culture, the same structure there as well. Yeah, I'm asking you about, you know, uh, <laughs> complex things, and you're, like, just trying to know where the bathroom is, right, in, yeah. in the building. <laughs> you know, but uh, you'll get, you're going to get used to the – have you gotten used to the Long Island Expressway yet? That's going to be an interesting challenge. No, uh, I have not, <laughs> but uh, I look forward to it. You know, they'll get my, my, my brain, you know, uh, wandering and, and things of that nature. So I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the opportunity. And uh, I'm super thankful. There's a, there's a, uh, a coach uh, on the, on the, the nets, uh, Ryan forehand, Kelly. I don't, you, you, yep. you probably know Ryan. Um, and we talked a while back here on the podcast and he talked about um, that moment in his career, he had, he had gone through an injury 
and then um, realized in, in, in his rehab, he was working, you know, getting better, getting rehabbed at a place where there were kids playing. And he started to help these kids. And uh, as part of his rehab, he was almost like coaching. And he realized that coaching was about seeing these young players get better, you know, and, 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 and how fulfilling that was for him. And then that's kind of where you know your calling is as a coach, when you can kind of take joy in seeing others get better. Uh, what is it about you that maybe has attracted you to coaching? Is it part of that seeing guys get better? How fulfilling is that for you, especially all these stops you've made in the G League and, and work with young players? How fulfilling is that? You know, where you used to be a player and it was about you getting better. Now it's about right. somebody else getting better. Right. Of course. You know, um, that's why I got into coaching, you know, to help young men become better people and ultimately better professionals. You know, as a coach, there's no no greater feeling than seeing a guy you work with all year get a call up. You know, seeing a two way guy get converted, you know, watch an excitement guy hmm. um, help win games for the Nets. You know, that's what it's all about. And that's what I'm most excited about. You know, my, my, well, my best development story came from working while I was in Washington, you know, with the Capital City Go-Go, working with a, a player named Jordan Goodwin. Um, he was one of the players that I was assigned to to work with. Um, coming out of school, Jordan was labeled as a guy who played extremely hard and was a good defender. Uh, to start the season, Jordan, like most rookies, you know, in this league, wanted to show that he can do more. Uh, mm -hmm. He struggled early on. Um, so one day after a rough game, you know, I just sat down with him and we simplified everything. You know, these are two the three things that will get you to the next level, you know? So I explained to him the importance of, you know, being really good at those three things first. And when the time comes, you can expand and add more to your game, your game, you know? And as a rookie, you know, coming to this league, naturally you want to see success right away, but it yeah. takes time. And obviously you have to put in the work and work hard. Um, but also you have to learn how to be a pro, you know, the importance of building, have good habits, you know, having a routine, you know, all that stuff matters. So Jordan, Listen, he worked his tail off. Jordan ended up getting a two-way contract with the Washington Wizards yeah. halfway through the season, and they ended up getting converted to an NBA contract towards the end of the season. So um, that's one of my best development stories, and, and that's what it's taken in, in, in this league, you know? Yeah. Um, your time will come, and when that time comes, you just want to make the most of it. Yeah, he's a good player. And, and I, you know, you, you, you've, you've, you get a chance to see that, and it, it is fulfilling to see a guy work that. And, you know, you – you know, it's interesting because a lot of these players that you're working with in the G League are guys that, you know, were star players at other levels, right? And even have the, and even have, you know, you get a guy that like Jordan, that, you know, has the ability to dominate probably at the G League level. And you yeah. see all those guys that have that ability, they could put up huge numbers and be the, the star focal point of a G League team. But that's not the role they're going to play in the NBA, right? So is... How do you how do you approach that with a player where it's like, well, you know, you may be a star and a guy that can score and put up twenty five points a game here in the G League, but we already have a couple of all star players at the NBA level. They need a guy that's just going to be a playmaker or a guy that's just going to be a shooter or a guy that's just going to be a defender. They they've got to learn to be role players sometimes. Um, I just curious to hear your 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 philosophy on on trying to help guys get better at being role players when they had the talent to maybe, you know, do more in the G League setting. Yeah, right. You know, um, I'm pretty sure, like, once you get to the NBA, you won't be the best player on your team. Like you said, you have stars and you have guys that's going to put up you know, 25 points uh, a night, you know. So when you get there, you're pretty much going to be a role player, right? Whatever you do best, you know, try to do it at a high level and, 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 and do it consistently, you know. So one thing that we preach and one thing that we're going to preach is, is building good habits, you know, mm -hmm. um, playing the right way, um, uh, taking the right shots, making the right plays. Right. Cause that translates on every level, no matter if it's the NBA, no matter if it's high level Europe, no matter like playing good basketball, playing the right way, translate on, on every level. So mm -hmm. we're going to teach that and we're going to preach that. Uh, I, I think of, you know, some G league players that, that have had success in the NBA. And I think, you know, you talked about, Goodwin and you mentioned you know he was a known as a hard playing guy Lawrence Frank was a, was a coach used to tell me um playing hard is a skill you know and you yeah. look for guys with NBA skills 
Um, and, and sometimes playing a guy's just ability to play hard is that skill, right? So, um, how do you identify that? Is that important to see out of a guy? What's it? Can you develop that? Can you just see it in a guy? Like, I'm just curious to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, no, I think you gotta identify those players, right? And, and, and once you identify those players, just know that playing hard and playing with effort translate at any level. Um, like I mentioned earlier, whether it's in the NBA, you know, high level Europe, um, in a G League, like that's a skill, you know. And I think uh, a lot of front office, a lot of coaches, they look for those guys because those are the guys that when it gets to the NBA, they can change the momentum of a game. You know, uh, a team could be down by 10 and you put that guy in the game, he's just a spark plug. So, you know, that translates. So um, I think when you identify those guys, um, you try to seek out those guys as much as possible. Let's let's start to shift gears. Talk about you, Mufanya Dofia. What kind of player were you at <laughs> you know Georgia Tech and and getting into the G League and playing a couple of years? What was your you know what was your mo? <laughs> so you know, you know what's crazy? Um, I was a really good baseball player. You know, growing up, my favorite sport was baseball. Growing up, you know, uh, I played baseball until my sophomore year in high school. You know, I batted left hand, played left-handed, uh, played center field. Um, and I felt like while I was on a baseball field, guys were getting better, you know, on a basketball court. So eventually I committed full-time to, to basketball. Uh, I played point guard, one of the top um, players in my class coming out of high school. Uh, I played for an AAU team called the Worldwide Renegades in the summer, uh, one of the top AAU programs in the country, um, now known as Game Elite. Mm-hmm. Uh, I attended Miller Grove High School, uh, now is a powerhouse in the state of Georgia. And it's funny, I always joke with my, my high school coach, Coach Sherman White. Um, he's the head coach at Pace Academy now and also the U16 Team USA head coach, um, was that we built a program from the ground up. You know, um, it's a, it was a brand new school when I arrived as a freshman. And by my senior year, we won a state championship. Um, and since then, they went on to win seven, a total of seven championships um, in school history. Um, wow. That was an unbelievable experience, and um, it was special to me, you know, uh, being able to see you know, where we started to where the program is now uh, was a really good thing to see. And, uh, and then the brotherhood that the program embodies, you know, that was great. Uh, my jersey's retired there, and it's mm-hmm. a special place. Now, I, I have a note about Miller, Miller Grove High School. Okay. And you mentioned your baseball playing career. So okay. you were the first player to hit a home run. In Miller Grove High School history. <laughs> yeah, you know, I told you it was a brand new school. So, you know, I started it off, you know, the first player to hit a home run. I, I saw that note and I, I, I found that, that little nugget there. And I was like, <laughs> well, I wonder how many years that Miller Grove High School had been around at that point. That was kind <laughs> of a, a caveat there. Yeah, it was the first year. So I said, you know, I said the tall, you know, I'm a guy that like to set the tone. So I said the tall. Uh, yeah, I was the first one to hit a home run. Uh, the guy threw me a uh, fastball down the middle, and uh, <laughs> I couldn't do, do nothing but the hit over the thing. So, no, it was great. No, I the, enjoyed it. The, uh, Stone Mountain, Georgia, is that's where Miller Grove High School is, right? Is in is it? I know it's Stone, it's Stone Mountain, Georgia is the, the town you're from. Yep. Um, so, Miller Grove High School is in, in, in actually in Lithonia, Georgia. Okay. Yep, it's in Lithonia, Georgia. I grew up in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Uh, and at Stone Mountain, Georgia, I remember there was there was a net player from there, uh, Marshawn Brooks. Yeah, from Stone yep. Mountain, Mar- Georgia. Marshawn Brooks. Yeah, we we grew up playing against um, each other in high school. You know, our okay, our okay. team, our schools were rivals in high school, and we used to go at it. You know, Marshawn's a really good scorer, was a really good player. Yeah, and uh, shoot, man, it was hard. He's a tough cover. I want to say he's still playing overseas somewhere. I think he's in China. Yeah, he's in China, man. He's killing it. Um, yeah. He's carved up a really good career. You know, after um, leaving the NBA. Um, he's doing well. He's doing extremely well. And and when I was looking through other esteemed people from Stone Mountain, Georgia, there was another really good baseball player from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Uh, Wally Joyner was Wally Joyner. Stone Mountain years ago. Um, and then I, I noticed that uh, uh, football, you had Bruce Irvin. Yeah. Um, and Childish Gambino. Donald Glover yeah. is from Stone Mountain, yeah. Georgia. You ever, yeah. you ever, you ever run across him at all in your time? I, I, I have not, I have not, but I knew those guys were from Stone Mountain. Um, it's a beautiful place, you know. I feel like I was raised the right way. Um, both parents was in my life, so and I'm, I'm extremely grateful, you know, how I was raised, you know. Um, 
Was that I got just a chance outside to of Atlanta? Just it's just yeah, it's like fifteen minutes um, yeah. east um, of Atlanta. Was what about you? You know, you mentioned your parents. Um, how did they? They're they're originally from Nigeria. Uh, originally from Nigeria. You know, and, my mom and yeah. and dad are both from Nigeria. Yeah, and I, and um, how did they influence your uh, your early development and childhood? You mentioned they were both together. It seemed like you had a good family, good upbringing there in Stone Mountain. Yeah, you know, if if anybody knows, you know, growing up in a Nigerian household, you know, uh, your parents are very very strict. You know, uh, my parents are very very strict growing up, um, and, and and if all the Nigerians out there, you know, uh, you, you either have to be a lawyer, a doctor, <laughs> or, 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 or do anything medical wise, right? So yeah. uh, they were hard on me early on, especially uh, about books, like doing the right things, uh, being a leader early on, not following the crowd, you know. And um, when you're young, you look back on it like my, my mom is on me, my dad is on me, and as you get older. You, tend, you start to appreciate, you know, the lessons you learn and, and, and you know, the values they put into you um, as a young kid. Is there, I, I'm curious how it ended up in Georgia. I don't know if you know that. Like, like is there is there a, a population? Did they have a connection to the area at some, somehow? Yeah, so a, a close friend of the family um, that my mom was really close with, you know, kind of told her about, you know, Atlanta, Georgia, and she that's the first place – place she went when she came to the states and she we've been there all our lives yeah fascinated by that all the time it must have been a great uh then honor for you and for them that you end up being a part of the nigerian national team as an assistant coach and then um in uh in, in 2021 mike brown who was the head coach at nigeria couldn't uh, because of his NBA obligations, couldn't coach the team. You served as the the head coach uh, in in the tournament play there in 2021. I imagine not only was that a great basketball experience, but that was uh, an honor for for you and your family to be a part of that. No, no, that was great. You know, um, you know, with the Nigerian national team, you know, the talent is there. You know, yeah. you know as you can see. Preparing for the Olympics, we had an opportunity to play against Team USA, and we ended up beating them. Mm. So uh, that show when we're at full strength, we're able to compete with anyone. You know, I think the game is growing tremendously in Africa. Um, it's a talent, a, a ton of talent there, um, and there's a lot of good players. Um, I think the next step is developing our youth system um, and making our programs even stronger. Uh, but like you mentioned, it's been an honor um, to be a part of Mike Brown's staff. He did a really good job laying the foundation. Um, and he gave me opportunity, you know, when he had obligations with the Warriors and with the Kings that, you know, he, he let me lead. He let me be the head coach. So I'm extremely grateful and thankful for the opportunity. Uh, and it meant a lot to, to my family and myself as well. Yeah, I know. As we see, the international play has gotten so much more uh, competitive. Uh, and there, there's there's a little more parity now than there used to be, you know. And, you know, we see you see it in the NBA, all these great international players playing in the NBA and how – one or two guys in basketball can make such a huge impact in in a team. I mean, look, you know, Slovenia is now a uh, power. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, Luca makes it a power. Right. Um, you know, but uh, I look at some, and I remember, you know, uh, Royale Ivy was the Nets assistant last year, and he was coaching South Sudan. And, right. um, you know, you, we talked about that, like how – you know, you see some of these players that could be generational talents and one guy, and there's got to be, you know, I, I feel like the African nations, you know, as, as they start to get better, we see with player development and we're starting to discover more players from that area. And um, you see the commitment that the NBA has made to the African nations. Like, I, I, I just feel like that's, they're poised now to become, like one of these teams is going to come out. It can be a great player come out of there, and then suddenly they're going to be, you know, a, a world power at some point. No, right. No, I mean, just think about like basketball with our borders that the NBA put on, right? You, yeah. you try to find a diamond or a rough, right? I mean, you want to get a steal. And um, like I said, there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of good players there. And the, the, the development is getting better and better. You know, you can see uh, the BAL, the ba Basketball After League, you know, that's starting to grow. So, you know, there's a lot of talent um, in Africa, and shoot, the sky's the limit. <laughs> uh, aside from uh, 
getting to know the uh, Long Island Expressway and know yourself around. Are you that familiar with uh, the New York area or is that something you're looking forward to exploring a little bit? I'm definitely looking forward to explore a little bit. You know, <laughs> um, just being from down south and growing up in Atlanta, this is totally different. You know, um, just the convenience you have in Atlanta, you know, just, hey, I want to get in the car and go to the, the shopping mall or go to Target and things of that nature. It was, it's definitely different in New York, so I'm looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward for the, the, to the challenge. Yeah, you got to learn to use the subway. <laughs> yeah, I got to learn that. Railroad. Right, uh, right. I, I know when you walk around Brooklyn uh, outside Barclays Center, um, there's the Oculus, which is this round video board, you know, and I ask everybody this at the end, if there's a, a slogan you could put up there that you live by or something that you want people to think about. Um what do you think that might be for you? Um, that's a great question. Um, one thing that comes to the top of my mind now is, is to leave no doubt, right? Um, no matter what profession you're in, work as hard as you can, um, give maximum effort, and let the chips fall where they may. You know, um, leave no doubt. No, that, that's kind of my slogan. Yeah, kind of, kind of like, uh, like, like, be so good they can't ignore you. Exactly. Exactly. So. <laughs> Leave no doubt. Well, Mufan Udofia, uh, leave no doubt about the <laughs> Long Island Nets this year. You got big shoes to fill because, you know, Ronnie Burrell had, I think they had a 15 or 16 game winning streak uh, toward the end of last year. They, I think they fell short in the, in the, in the semifinals of the playoffs, the conference final, but you know, big shoes to fill there out in Long Island. This year. No, no, no. Yeah. We, I mean, we're super excited. I'm super thankful for the opportunity. Um, not just for me, which for the coaching staff, um, as well, you know, just to help those guys grow and get better and expand their overall skill set. It's going to be fulfilling for me, you know, and the players as well. You know, um, you know, I can't wait. I look forward to it. I look forward to leading this group and I, and I, and I can't wait to to get in front of the Long Island fans and uh, have it uh, put out a good brand of basketball.